So I had the pleasure to meet Isaac in uh, 2014 and throughout the years when Monique Berger started supporting his artistic practice and he was invited at the Moscow International Biennial for Young Arts where he presented um, his very delicate work. Uh, I dated a guy in Buchenwald 2013 in which you actually um, ask a guy that you dated to write about your encounter at the um, established during the Nazi regime. So it was a very challenging work to be shown at that time in Russia. Do you want to say shortly a few things about the work? Sure. Um, uh, thank you, Aita. Thank you, uh, Asia Society as well, for having me here. So uh, thank you for coming. And um, for this work, uh, I dated a guy in Buchenwald. It was, um, it was more like a story or like what actually happens to me that um, I was living in Weimar and then I, um, I was on dating app. Then I met uh, a guy that like, it was like not so many people around. So there was a tourist coming to um, Weimar and I was like, oh yeah, let's, let's have a date. And I asked him, where do you want to go? He said, how about we go to Buchenwald Memorial? It's a very important place to go to pay visit, like where homosexuals were uh, persecuted and executed. Then we went to this um, memorial together. I said, it's very important to visit that. And I was new in Weimar, so we went together. And uh, somehow it happens that we had a date there. It was very weird. And um, and then we were like, I kept thinking about this experience, like inside a memorial. And then we, we kissed. And then I told him that people couldn't do it here in the past. Like, uh, because, because like people would have been persecuted like if you do things like this in public space and so then it was the Moscow Biennial for Young Art and um, I, I remember back then that they invited me to um, give a talk about this work so the work is actually a paper and uh, showing the text of where uh, Francois uh, he wrote about the dates that we had um, about that we can oak trees <laughs> by the oak trees and then we also um, um, like kiss in the mm -hmm. memorial. And um, then the museum invited me to give a talk in Moscow. And uh, back then this was in 2014 where they were like banning the gay propaganda for the next 100 years. And uh, I also didn't have, I didn't have money to go to Moscow back mm -hmm. then, I was still studying. And so uh, Burger Collection, um, I, um, it was like my professor kind of talked with uh, like introduced me to Burger Collection and then Burger Collection helped me to go uh, to Moscow to give a talk about the, uh, mainly about the uh, paragraph 175 in Germany and also uh, like how like it was developed during the like the war time yeah. um, and then and then uh, yeah it was also very weird it was translated into Russian when I was speaking what? yeah and one funny thing was that like I got interviewed by um, national TV yes. they asked me so uh, what can you tell us about your work and then I talk about like homosexuals and gay propaganda uh, then for the next 100 years and then she she said like uh, How's Moscow? <laughs> She's just like, oh, this part you can't, we can't do. So it's like, yeah. So that was like a story, like how I got to know my body and, and then how I like yeah. also work in the film, also like about this witnessing history. Yeah. Wonderful. And so um, she went on to collect several remarkable works of yours, but also engaged in 2015 in uh, your. Um, performance one sound of the history in which you ask people to line up and speak about their stories and Monique chose uh, this very special moment to speak about how she lost her own son in 2011 due to a tra tragic accident so this has also I think um, shaped your relationship and next month you're actually gonna start a uh, project at the Virgo Collection in the storage. Do you want to give a brief introduction to this? Yeah, so um, um, definitely Monique is a, very, is a very dear friend, also 
um, uh, her story is very, very sad and at the same time very motivating people. Like um, like how she deals with uh, mourning, how she deals mm. with uh, the loss and the grief. And uh, later on, I think we will also look into some works that um, um, that like how I also work on the idea of mourning and for mm -hmm. like uh, different uh, like also like uh, other like for example Kita Kovitz we'll talk a little bit about Kita yeah. Kovitz and for the projects that we are shaping it at the moment <laughs> like that uh, for next month that we're gonna start and but more like um, I have been invited to do different works uh, for the past few years to work with um, collections mm -hmm. and um, like it was actually first IFA Gallery Institute for Auslandsbeziehungen they invited me to um, work on their collection then later we we'll also talk more about it and to look into um, kind of like from an artistic perspective, like as an artist, like looking into the collection, what do I found and how would I be able to maybe develop works in response to or in reference to works of the collection. So that, that would be pretty much like a model that mm -hmm. would be, yeah. this will be over the course of the year. Wow. Exciting. I, Very I like exciting. That. So you're going to be here more often. <laughs> yeah. So in 2020, you talked to Aisha Society about your work, Falling Carefully, which was exhibited at the same time um, at Asian Society in Hong Kong. Yeah. And uh, you did the work just for the exhibition, Next Act um, Contemporary Art from Hong Kong. And so would you like to give us just a, a brief introduction about that before we move on to the actual topic of today? Sure. Fall, falling carefully is like a series of work where you see sculpture and drawings and many different parts coming together. It was back then in 2020 uh, in Hong Kong. And I think back in the time, I think I work a lot on like the movement of falling or like actually I've been working a lot on the movement of falling. Here also on the screen, you also see the sculpture where you see me being duplicated three times and and me falling at the same time, but then somehow got stuck. Like then it doesn't fall, it's not fallen anymore. And so it's like how this falling can be carefully uh, like proceed. And then it comes to a point that it cannot be fallen anymore. So I think I've worked a lot on like the idea of collective falling, but at the same time, the I would say how the sculpture is also performing, the fact that the attribute of the sculpture that it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. And um and then how this uh, attribute is responding to uh the movement of falling as well yeah so uh I think since then I I, I still continuously doing working on the movement of falling and and yes yeah. which actually brings us to the next work we're going to talk about falling reversely which you did in two thousand and twenty one in response to institutional violence and assaults against the Asian community. Um, we're gonna uh, look into this work. We have a short sequence that Rebecca is gonna show us on the screen. And then uh, we can discuss it. Wonderful. Can you briefly introduce your work on reversely and how it came about? Sure. That we just saw. So it was um it was a time when um it was 20, 20, 20, 21. I had this okay. idea of like how falling can be reversed. Like um so um I've been seeing a lot of like uh news or footages. I mean during the pandemic how um um Asian would be attacked on the street in public space, like all over the place, different places. I mean, if it is being reported like this, which also means there are many things that wasn't reported too. So many um, uh, of my friends, uh, many friends of mine, and also including myself during that period of time also got like 
uh, physical or like some uh, or like verbal attack, like on the street um, in Germany, and of course like other places too. So it was a time when I was like I really wanted to do something um, like like kind of like work against it or to find a way. Um, and my way probably was like uh, yeah, my way was performance and video. And I got invited um, to um, to do a commission work by uh, Fed, the Federal Foreign Office, Ausfertiges Aus Amt. Mm -hmm. And so I had this like scholarship um, artist residency program. And then they asked me like, oh, can you do like a video, like uh, which is like in the framework of the Festival of Light, which I can project um, video onto their building. And so somehow I was like, uh, sure, I actually have a lot of video. I can project many different things. Okay. But then I would ah, actually would be interesting to uh, work on this uh, topic that I really want to work on. And while also like project the video on the Ausfertiges arms, because when looking into the idea of Ausfertiges arms or like idea of foreign relations, and it also has a lot of how let's say foreigners or like Asian or different uh, people are shaped mm -hmm. and they were the ones keeping kind of like the gateway for that. So I um, then work with a lot of uh, a, a group of a Berlin based um, Asian dancers. We were mainly working on how the movement of falling could be reversed. Mm -hmm. So in the very first, like in that, uh, in the video that we just watched, we see we were practicing falling and how we fall at the same time or how we fall ending with the same posture sometimes. Like on the ground, everyone has the same posture. And then we get up again and this a bit like practicing. And then at the same time, you see those kind of very slow movements of like constructing certain uh, movement of falling, like falling and then reversing and then back again. That was also like we were looking into those uh, footages of attack, racist attack, and we we enact, we enacted in a way that like uh, differently, so with a lot of care and support, and um and then later in the video you also saw um the performance was performing um like kind of he's he was being attacked, mm -hmm. but then he also used his own body to reverse the attack, like how how he used different speed. Like, for example, the attack might be slowed down, but then he reverses it back very quick. Or like he got attacked very quick, but then reverses it back very yeah. yeah. Like reclaiming the power of the own body. And at the same time, you don't see the perpetrator too. Yeah. Thank you. And so in 2015, uh, you were attacked on the streets of Berlin and had a very similar experience yourself with violence and racism. How has this shaped your work since then and how do you feel about it now? So in 2015, like the, the incident was I was uh, walking just on the street. Mm -hmm. Like I was uh, after work, I had to go back to I had to go back home. So I would just uh, I was at um I was working at Gorky Maxim Gorky Theater, which is very much center in like in Mita in Berlin, and I was walking onto the Linden. It's also a very famous street um in Berlin, and 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 some people kind of like came at me, starting with uh um uh Chinese ni hao uh konnichiwa and and like let's play uh football. I forgot like so many different words. Like two people came at me. Well, they also like uh like intended to get something out of me, like um like trying to maybe get my stuff and here and there. And um so I shouted back, um like shout like shouting <laughs> like very loud. I used to sing in a choir, so if I shout it's quite loud actually. <laughs> so I was like shouting. <laughs> and then they got a bit shocked because like if you look at me, I'm like I'm not like a very muscular guy. Um and um, so they like somehow their like kind of position kind of got threatened, like in a way that they kind of they I don't know that's just what I felt that they they felt they were threatened and it's also not supposed to be like this that I'm not supposed to be someone who should be aggressive, 
And so they use a glass bottle and hit my head and then I fell down. And since then, I actually did a lot of uh, work working on, uh, I won't say consciously, <laughs> But like since then, a lot of my work uh, have been dealing with falling. Yeah, like uh, the movement of falling or the support. Like what support did I get uh, when I fell? How people came to me and uh, like asked me if I'm fine, if I can stand again, and try to uh call the police. And they were asking, "Oh, sh shall we call the police?" I said, "Well, they can't catch the guy anyway. It's just like long gone." Like. And then I went to the ambulance because I wasn't, I couldn't hear for a while and I couldn't feel anything like here. So, um, and then on the ambulance, they said, um, uh, so um, should we call the police? I said, well, I don't think it they would do anything. And then they said like, uh, if you don't call the police, um, you will have to pay for the ambulance. I said, thank God for the police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was yeah. like what happens and somehow yeah in a way it shaped my practice yeah like but i won't say like very directly some works are more like yeah. directly i remember there's one painting that i did uh was doing just like one sentence is the world your friend question yes. mark. yeah yeah but so it's actually beautiful that in, in such a vulnerable moment, instead of um, seeing the negativity, you found yourself more into this, how was I helped? What was the reaction of people around me? And that's what you've also brought further in falling reversely. With collectivism falling together and trying to push back to what comes towards you. Thank you. So um, next, I would like to talk about the Mütte 2022, translated the mothers. Um, the Mütte is originally a work by Kete Kolwitz, historical historical woodcut from her war series from 1923. Now you have um, created in your own language a piece that is in dialogue with her historical work. First, we're going to watch a short uh, sequence and then... Uh... How did you interpret Kate Colby's original work and how does it reference your own work? Uh, as I mentioned earlier about this experience working with IFA Gallery Institute for Ensemble des Jungen, and um, like it was, yeah, it's a long story. We worked together, <laughs> for, we worked together for over one year mm -hmm. to um, work on different pieces. And I got drawn to Kate Colfit's work very quickly doing like the research. Like, so I have different, uh, like different research methodology when it comes to uh, like what kind of artworks I would be interested in and this and that. But I just always go back to her work in a way, I don't know why. And um, like the exhibition that we did actually caused fears of interest. So like how well, how does it work with this idea of like be interesting or being interested in something? Sometimes also like very difficult to explain certain kinds of intuition or how it echoes like uh, or trigger my emotion looking at the work. And so I chose the piece from Kate Colfitz, um as uh, we have seen the Muta, uh, the mothers, and where you see a group of mothers, they were um holding each other like a group hug and some children were also there like um and it's a very powerful I mean it's like a very famous uh, piece of work that she did and it's in many different collections and has been shown many many times but when I see it again somehow like I see it as like a performance like I see a group of people they're hugging and um and I also try to figure it out like how how would um how 
how would I respond to it? Or like, or like me living in a time being able to encounter her works in Germany, and um, like how would I be able to um, like respond to this uh, beautiful work, the Mütte? So um, like after some developments, and I decided to make a video. Actually, um, where you saw right now in, with the two screens, actually, it's like uh, back to back. I always have problem explaining this work, but it's like two screens, they back to back come together. So when you see the front and you have to walk to the back to see the back. So um, um, so I wanted to have this um, video, like kind of having a group hug, that group hug that they are like spinning, like turning in, in a circle that never ends while... Um, well, like I was inviting, I did it in Berlin. So I um, invited Berlin-based singers and performers. Some are professional singers, mm -hmm. some are non-professional singers to work together to sing this piece uh, or like to perform this piece. And also working with uh, musician Dagmar Aina. She has been working with mourners, like people who are mourning in Munich for over 10 years. So it's a very special way that she does uh, to grieve together with people and try to use singing and music to uh, do with um, the emotions. So somehow, um, um, like the choreography that you see somehow has a certain reference to the Muta, but of course it's not really like exactly a reenactment because uh, I would still say it's more like referencing critical bits instead of like reenacting the it's not possible to reenact the, yeah. the woodprint yeah of course and so uh, what are the performers singing and how did you choose what was to be sung so um like the the whole um uh video is um uh, I was super long, but when we were working on it, um, we uh, talked to the performers, like mm -hmm. what kind of uh, music that they know when it comes to mourning or funeral. So we have a focus on mourning song. And I mainly work with Dakma. And uh, so we discuss how the song should go and how like to develop this um, singing, like how should be how the song should be sung. How many lyrics should be there? If we should include religious context or not? So, for example, the very um, like the um, Lucas and Master, like that, like it's more like a mantra, like a like a san Sanskrit mantra that, and then uh, Dagma also put music in it, and then uh, we were working a lot on this repetition. A bit like singing, when you're doing mantra, you have to repeat, yeah. repeat, and again. Something very meditative. Yeah, it's like very meditative, and at the same time, like, um, like just, but still together, like in a group hug. And there were also, like, later you heard the, like, deep river, like, uh, it's a very um, um, famous um, African-American uh, morning songs. And, um, so uh, we were, I mean, Dakma knows this song before and um, Zaki, um, one of our performers, he also knew the song and he also proposed the song, but then we figured out that the song somehow is very religious. So Dakma also changed a bit of the, of the wording. After yeah, wording. After wording. Yes. So we, we, we work a lot on like very simple text mm -hmm. or simple uh, sentences and we repeat it. Like and sometimes also as you see in the very beginning there is no um no no uh lyrics. It's like also yeah. using humming. like humming just the just the sound, the melody itself. And um so this is pretty much how, how we work together on the on the songs. Yeah. And how did the performers um that were in the performance react to your work? Did they share their feelings or thoughts on it? The performers actually, I don't know. I, it's always like this when, when I work in a performance or like a video piece. Uh, we didn't know each other that well, but we just got very, very close after just, a, I don't know, doing this group hug for over actually many times, <laughs> many, many times. 
And then we try different ways to spin and someone can't move in the middle, got stuck and how we make space for each other and how the stepping is also doing so we can like, uh, like spin in a circle. And uh, you know, we, got, we bond together with singing and performing. And then I remember also like, uh, like after, we also have a live performance version. Mm -hmm. And some people also cry afterwards. And uh, there were some very strong reactions. It's very, very emotional. Like the, like the songs. Like when you repeat, okay. then you sing with different emotions. It's the same sentence, but like okay. with different people sometimes. And and also when the audience is also giving the energy, like to the performance. Like when when there are audience standing there and looking at you and listening and it's also a different kind of exchange yeah but we mm -hmm. we bond very fast together and mm -hmm. it's a very nice thing to for me to do performance that you you really get uh get to know people better yeah yeah it's quite an intimate space that you share with each other and so first we did a video work and then the performance yeah so the video work, as I mentioned before, with this two screen, yeah. so I wanted to kind of spin forever, in way, mm. like in this video format, in a loop, like, and um, that was also here shown together with Kate Colbert's uh, Demuter, and we selected three different prints. So the collection has several different prints, and uh, yeah, and then uh, we find it very very interesting with this repetition of print making. Uh, woodcut and how also this video is like in loop like repeating again, again. Yeah. Can I can I quickly ask a question that's coming in from online from yes. from the audience yes. so uh, one participant is asking um, who or what is being warned so it's the mother the mothers but who are they mourning ah who are they you mean in the performance yeah, yeah. I to be on uh to be honest I would say there is not like a particular um particular person or particular thing that um that this performance dedicated to or it wasn't also even mourning Kate Colfitz or like the the son of Kate Colfitz that she lost it was to me I think I was more working on the I like um. Like how performance would be uh, able to deal with mourning and while people can impose like who they want to mourn. I remember when during the performance, it's actually a friend. Um, she came to the performance and it's a very long performance, like two hours. We sing for two hours and very durational and meditative. She was there for a very long time and um, afterwards she came to us and she, I, I know her before and she said like, uh, thank you very much. Uh, like she actually just lost her father very recently mm -hmm. and uh, not everything that she, like we saying that she understood, but she somehow, it gave her a space like to, um, to deal with this emotion, to deal with this um uh, to do with her own personal mourning. So that's the reason why I think when I did this work, I didn't want to be like, I do a work, so it dedicates to mm -hmm. a certain person, but it's more opening up a chance or space for people to, for others, for others so that they can, they can mourn uh, together with the music mm -hmm. and the performance, yeah. And um, what was the most memorable experience of a person engaging with your work either participating in it or um, enjoying it from the outside over the years sure there are many like there are there is not really like one uh, particular person but i remember people crying very much in the performance or like after seeing the performance such as the muta or like the performance that we mentioned in 2015, um, uh, like how Monique was sharing her like story. like her own story about she lost her son in an accident, that uh, he he was very young, and uh, the those was very memorable. And at the same time, I also remember 
um, people come after the performance, they come to me and talk to me and about their personal, um, could be their sexuality, their struggle. I also remember one woman um, came to me and was crying very much in my studio. She was telling me how she lost her uh, after the performance in 2015, One Sound of the Histories. He was actually talking about the story that she, um, her brother was uh, murdered. And um, and then we were then talking about the stories. And later on, we actually worked together to um, do, I did a work which is responding um, also to her experience and dedicated to to her uh, brother. But they are also like um, happy thing too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's like not everything is like so sentimental and sad. But yeah, I also remember there was a lady joining my. Uh, she joined my performance, and we were like doing like steps, like following each other's like steps, and she got very excited. She was performing uh, in the performance. Since she was so excited, she brought out her phone while performing to film, it, film all the other people. <laughs> and then the curator was like, oh, can you do things like this? Yeah. I was like, mm, not only people do, do things like this, but oh, well, she's happy. And yes. uh, and I wouldn't go there and stop her. Yeah. So that's also more about like when working with different public or yeah. different, uh, like for example, when I work with dancers, also different or... or um, Actors. Everyone brings yeah. in their own story into the work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So I would like to talk a bit more about Breath Mark's Mother with Her Dead Son 2022, which is a installation work you did at Neue Wache in dialogue with Pieta, a work that um, Kete Kolwitz did as a memorial to losing her own son in uh, World War I. And so we're going to show a short video sequence, and perhaps after we've seen it, you could walk us through and explain how this work came about. Sure. Maybe I can already speak. There's yes, you sound. can already yeah. speak. Like... Um... <laughs> It's a very short video too. So this is um, at Eva Gallery uh, during the exhibition Chains of Spears. Um, and I was working with uh, uh, Susanna Weiss and Inka Kressel, uh, we and also many other artists that was like a whole year process of uh, working on this uh, exhibition. So here is more like the exhibition uh, setting and what you can see in the exhibition. And what you just saw, actually, um, it's nice to put the, um, the video because um, the first thing that you saw actually is a glass sculpture yeah. consisting of 14 different pieces of glass panels. And each of them uh, is one breath mark. So it's like the like when you are breathing in front of the glass, then you make a breath mark there. So it's like uh, different breath marks, and and in the end, this constructed the image of Pieta, uh, Pieta, which is a sculpture by uh, Kate Kulpitz, and uh, where she was holding uh, uh, very peacefully her uh, that son, um, and uh, and also the photograph. Frames, which is like how this all like like all these breath marks when they come together it will become an image like this yeah mm -hmm. which is also intentionally printed a bit bigger uh like a life size more like a life size and then the sculpture is a bit more like smaller which is more referencing the original size of uh Kitakobis sculpture yeah and so when you're using your breath marks as a um painting stroke you're like really literally painting and then later printing it on the glass how did you come up with this process it actually started uh it was in 2015 um if you i don't know some some of you might have visited um berlin um there is a very important memorial called neubacher the new the new guard house um 
where they dedicate this memorial to the victims of uh, uh, of the wars. And it also was a very uh, heated discussions about who are the victims. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like Germany has gone through different political times and uh, some like the perpetrator actually could become a victims too. Mm -hmm. And then it can, like the, the identity of victim who can like swap or change. So it was very confusing. And um and they decided uh, after reunifications of Germany they decided to put Kitakulta's sculpture in this um uh, memorial, which is actually an enlarged version like of of the original sculpture. So the original sculpture is very small, like this, like not like very small, but like uh like that big. Yeah. And then um they enlarged the enlarge it to a life size so that it can kind of like represent the nation. And um and I was as I mentioned about this experience working with uh Goki Theater, I was um doing an exhibition there and Goki Theater was located right at the back of Neuerbacher. Mm -hmm. So I actually did a work called Neuerbacher where I used my breath to cover the image of Neuerbacher, to cover the to make it very blurry. And so the image of the memorial is like covered. And when dealing with this uh, original sculpture that uh, is from the Eva collection, I find it very interesting with these different sizes, like how nation would need a bigger size or a life size, or like how she was intentionally making it rather smaller mm -hmm. so that you can see the fingerprints, like a different yeah, perception like of the body. And um, then... Somehow, like my previous work led me to uh, try out like experimenting with uh, breath marks and how it can compose images. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Pete Kolwitz once expressed, I quote, I have never done a work cold, but always with my own blood, so to say. Translated from German, nie habe ich eine Arbeit kalt gemacht sondern immer gewisse Maßen mit meinem Lute. How does this statement um, resonate with your own artistic practice? I would say it's more like, you can also feel it from her works, like uh, the expressions that she depicts or the passion that she has or the also like the grief that she has gone through but still standing there and fighting and like the blood and the warmth like as she said for me is a lot about the human temperature about the proof of living and and how this can be also as a form of resistance yeah mm -hmm. so that's pretty much also like with the breath mark you see is the mm -hmm. is like it shows that uh someone is still alive like a proof of living at the same time it can only be uh manifest through the temperature yeah are carrying on the legacy also of Kette, which was always I her. Think. Just history. as we have 10 yeah. minutes le left, I thought maybe I asked if someone in the audience has questions as well. Otherwise, I'm sure you have and I have as well, but maybe somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your talk. I would be interested maybe in the technique. Um, how exactly do you produce um, this as a breath mark marks? Um, so um, I experiment a lot with different texture and on glass and different glass and also like uh, even like what is be behind the glass too. Like um, so there are different, um, like it produce different kinds of images. So I, of course, I breathe and following the, the, the sculpture and I try to find a bomb, for example, like painting the, like thinking about painting the hat or like painting the the hand and um and and then like what you see here is actually the technique called glass etching like how like it's more like when the glass is being like acidic so mm -hmm. that it leaves a trace and that's like how but at the same time it's so similar to the real breath mark so somehow like i uh like when experimenting different uh, materials or ways uh, to do that, I 
discovered that and so in the end I decided that this would be like like the this acid and the glass and how it uh leaves the trace um of the of the breath mark and that would be for me back then was like oh that's the best way to do it yeah So I was wondering, uh, when did you start to be interested and uh, why you're interested in the theme of death and mourning? Do you have your personal experience with that? So I I would say that like um, after coming to Germany, I somehow got into, uh, I, I was studying public art. So we were dealing with a lot like commemoration or like uh a lot about the Second World War and and so somehow that kind of led me into like um works that is dealing with individual and collective memories. And I would say that like with the topic, let's say morning, um is like true, when did it start? I think it's maybe around like 2020, 2020, 2019. So I would say there are two different levels. One would be, uh, I would say the global level, which is like seeing different events or global events and um, seeing uh, the fragility of lives being uh, like, uh, could be lost very, like sometimes like so fast or some, so easily. And um, somehow trigger uh, me to, uh, wanting to use morning to respond to like how I feel with this powerlessness towards uh like uh death or or different uh difficulties and that's like one level and at the same time there also a I don't know there is also personal level but I also don't want to um directly link my personal uh, experience like to say that I'm doing these works because I have certain uh, I have experienced certain loss and I would say that definitely the loss contributes into like how I feel and how I deal with works but at the same time I think very much of like how these levels they come together that brought me to uh, respond to the world in this way like looking into ways, uh, performance or different format to do with uh, mourning or commemoration. Yeah. I have a technical question on uh, the Buddha, where you saw, uh, uh, show two screens, but the view is uh, at, the same, at the same angle and you see the two different sides to, so I don't know, it's opposite each other. But when you look at the background, the background is the same background. How do you manage that? Was there more than one camera? Or how did you do that? Or did you repeat the, uh, the uh, rotation multiple times to show that? So it actually is a um, uh, very good observation. You find a trick. <laughs> no, um, it's actually from the same background. So it's like from the same directions of, uh, of, uh, of a camera. And so when editing it, I was more like trying to figure it out when when uh, the left when the front screen is showing the front of my face, then the back screen should show my back. So I try for, uh, try to do this, and um, um, so in the end, you're actually only watching like in a way still this one angle, but like. Um, but the video editing or the installation make it possible that it, there is like a loop or like you can't even see, uh, is it actually like the, the same background or as you said, maybe it's actually the, the opposite background. But by the way, it's, it was in close to Huina. It's like, um, like this location is a ruin, like a church ruin. It was bombed during the second world war and very, if you go to Berlin, it's very close to Alexanderplatz. It's a very weird space, very magical space that like Alexanderplatz is rather ugly. Mm -hmm. And, but like, <laughs> if you come to this ruin, it's like totally a different, you feel different sense of uh, Berlin. And, and it's also in a way signifies the um, birth of Berlin too, like, uh, like the church itself. 
and yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, I was wondering in your performances, it reminds me a lot of contemporary dance. Did you study a dance or a choreography? I I actually have never studied dance. I can dance in the club, but uh, <laughs> I, I can't really like uh, they are like amazing, you know, like all the contemporary. I work with contemporary dancers too, so some of the works maybe you see uh, there are certain movement is uh, could remind you of contemporary dance. And um, I actually never study dance or uh, choreography. But I think when I do a performance, I'm more like image based, like thinking about an image. But it's just more like this image uh, in the way it moves. <laughs> I don't know if you can call it moving image, but like uh, that's like when I or like I think a lot about how uh, representations like, for example, when I do a gesture or a posture, what does it represent mm -hmm. and um, and how how using performance would be able to edit this kind of representation. When I say editing, it's more like uh, normally if I throw a punch with a very like like very speedy, like very fast, you need speed to throw a punch. But then when you slow it down, then you can still see that it's representing the like the attack, but the kind of the function of the attack is gone. Or like then like when you land on anything else, you're not hurting yourself, you're not hurting anyone because the speed is gone. So this is very much like how I would uh, perceive uh, like this idea of editing, representation, or like in performance. But yeah, I think maybe I should also try uh, sometimes <laughs> to learn the contemporary dance. We're almost at the end, but maybe Aita, maybe you want to say something else? Or, um, yeah. I just want to quickly, um, to let the audience know, can you tell us really quickly about your upcoming show at the Hamburger Bahnhof, which you've been installing yesterday? Just a quick, and then maybe we can do another answer uh, question. Yeah, so I um so the the work that you've seen following firstly I'm going to show uh the photographs of the of this project uh at Hamburg Bahnhof which which will be open actually 16 of June mm -hmm. and um so this time they are working on an exhibition dealing with uh the national collections and so very excited for the festival. <laughs> and your work is going to be included with the permanent collection for two years. So you have yeah. the chance to see it yeah. over two years. And then next week, you will be at Liste Art Fair with your Hong Kong Gallery Blind Spot, yeah. where you're going to have a solo booth. So if you are in Basel, you should really make sure to go see it. And right now you're at Setareka. Yeah, where they included uh, works of yours and asked you to come speak last week. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So if you have the chance, you yeah, can go I'm, see I'm it. Glad. <laughs>